generic yet polite salutations to one and all. This is Trent Mayfair coming to you from yet another hotel room because quite honestly it is mid to late November and it is cold out at night. Um, ergo, it's kind of worth the expense for me. Um, now, this past weekend I went to Garden of Destinies and before I get into that I'd just like to talk about uh, a little something that's been on my mind. Um, well, almost everyone I've met on this trip uh, on the weekends and in the areas that I visit during the week have been absolutely amazing, and a number of them have become friends. Uh, there's a certain amount of true isolation uh, that I've experienced on this trip that's allowed me to become a lot more introspective. Uh, when you're driving for very long periods of time, very often, even when you have like the music playing and what have you, you have a lot of time to think. And... Um, that combined with some brutal honesty from some of these new friends and old ones, uh, I feel like I'm actually making progress on becoming a more socially acceptable and well-rounded human being. Uh, it, th this is a very tough thing for me. I've always had issues handling myself in social situations where I'm not in performance mode. Um, but part of this whole trip is... It's about increasing my understanding and broadening my perspectives and working on bettering myself. And an integral part of that is this type of introspection and brutal honesty that people have been providing to me. I don't know that I'm doing something wrong unless somebody actually comes up and says, hey, that was highly inappropriate. And to all the friends who have done that, I, I am truly grateful. Thank you so much. Um, but all that being said, as I am entering the last leg of this journey, I'm not going to have as much downtime as I have, you know, uh, up to this point. Uh, and so my focus uh, on this betterment of self and everything is going to have to, to a certain degree, take precedence over the more banal thoughts that I've been offering at the uh, introduction to these videos. Uh, predominantly because while there is still a bunch to see and I am still being very affected by it, I, uh, I'm noticing more that the stuff that I'm experiencing now is really more for me than, you know, for public display. Um, one of the big aspects of a performer is that we tend not to realize that not everything is meant for performance purposes. It absolutely can be, but I'm not sure if that's exactly the type of person that I want to be. So until I can figure that out... Um, I'm going to be focusing the rest of these videos solely on what I learned about running LARPs, and I'm going to be skipping these initial drive thoughts, unless there's something that I really want to talk about in these, as opposed to just kind of filler up, oh, hey, I did this, I visited the Grand Canyon, I did this. You, you all know all the tourist stuff. You, you, you'll all do it yourself, or you have done it yourself. So I don't really need to talk about that uh, on these videos much anymore, in my opinion. Uh, if I'm wrong about this, please say so in the comments down there, and I will absolutely go back to them if people are truly interested. So, this past weekend, I went to Gardens of Destiny in uh, near Atlanta, Georgia, specifically Full Villa. And um, jumping right into it, uh, the administration of this game... Uh, were extremely coordinated and trusting of each other. It was, uh, you know, wonderfully coordinated game. The administration was uh, constantly in communication with each other, and when they weren't, they could trust that their staff was actually doing what needed to be done. Uh, were they helpful? Oh, dear gods, yes, were they helpful. Uh, every staff member I asked a question of knew the answer immediately. Uh, they made themselves readily approachable. I rarely saw any of them have to reference the rule book uh, in order to provide answers. And even when they did, it was really more just a nitpicking of how the wording is and determining what the spirit of the rule was as opposed to the actual letter of the law. Um, not once did I feel judged or like an annoyance, despite the many rules blunders I made during this game. They were understanding. They uh, absolutely went out of their way to make sure that everybody understood what was going on. Uh, and they made themselves readily available uh, whenever anybody had any questions. So, uh, were they attentive? Um, so there's running a LARP. 
And then there's running a LARP professionally. LARP is an entertainment service business, and every staff member at Garden of Destiny was professional above and beyond the call of what any volunteer position should normally require. Uh, continuous yet non-intrusive checking in with the players, gentle reminder of things, and an unbridled enthusiasm towards wanting everyone to have fun made this LARP stand out above all others I've been to in my life. Not just on this trip, in my life. And I've been LARPing for 20 years, so that's saying something. Now, all that being said, um, the rule book. Um, my initial read-through reaction of the rule book was, uh, that the rule set is rather complicated, it's a bit difficult to figure out. It's a lot difficult to figure out. Um, they do have some very unique ideas, which is kind of what contributed to that, because it's things that I've never seen in other LARPs before. Uh, you know, but I do question how some of these ideas could work with a larger player base and keeping everything sorted out correctly. I, uh, you know, and I did intend to talk to them about how they keep character cards coordinated when players can freely swap out the skills like they have the ability to do in this game. Um, you know, and those were my initial read-through reactions. Uh, I did get a chance to talk to them about some of those things, uh, and I was very surprised to find out that they don't really keep all that much track of the character cards, just the character points. So characters can really just kind of swap things out as they want during a game, with limitations, obviously. But it really did allow for a certain degree of versatility and vers um, verisimilitude that uh, you really don't see in other games. So, as I said, the, the rulebook is actually a rather unique system, and... It really does allow players to tweak their character without penalty or time gates, uh, beyond just the standard leveling up time gate because they want you to attend, and you know that obviously makes makes a lot of sense to have those. Um, over the last 20 years, I've heard a lot of LARPers wish they could set their characters up appropriately for individual modules. Well, this rule system allows for that. Um, you know, th th there are more there are more than enough skills, spells, etc. No two characters are the same unless they are designed to be. Uh, the only downside is that there's a lot more things to remember due to the wide range of effects. Uh, this can be mitigated with a little bit of extra study and, um, uh, you know, actually going to the games to get the practice in, meeting with players outside a game, and like going through a couple of your own built modules just to practice things. Um, and after, like, a game or five, you'll be more than comfortable with these things. Um, and additionally, as I said before, if you're confused, just ask the nearest person or staff member, because there is no judgment, uh, on that stuff at this game. And that was truly heartwarming to see, like, the, the, the amount of times that I have seen uh, players feel like they're judged, whether or not they are, feel like they are judged, uh, just for asking a simple question like, wait, how exactly does that poison that I was just hit with work? Uh, because, you know, it's all detailed in the rulebook and they expect you to read it, but let's be honest, nobody actually reads the rulebook in full. Uh, they go to the things that pertain to their character, and that's really about it, if that. Uh, so the fact that they were able to give that uh, impression of being non-judgmental, really open things up to just, you know, ask questions, let fly with comments, and not really have to worry about it beyond the general, like, you know, watch your speech, watch your language, don't offend people, etc., etc., etc. Um... The diversity of the actual characters, uh, you know, as, as I said before, it was a highly diverse game. There's more than enough skills. And honestly, if you are going to go to this game, don't pigeonhole yourself into your comfortable archetypes with this game. Uh, you know, and by all means, start with that. Uh, but, you know, look into everything that's available to you. Every skill, spell, and other ability is actually useful in this game. So it's actually a disservice to yourself and your game experience if you only do the same thing forever. Um, I was actually talking to one player about this who, when he walked in, they said, okay, you know, what kind of character do you want to play? His response was, swords. And 
over time, he, the, you know, that's what the character became known for. He was the sword guy, you know. Uh, and he came into this past game wearing this beautiful golden robe and everything. And apparently he had taken uh, some points in diplomacy. And it was a huge diplomatic campaign. So he basically stepped up and started doing all the diplomatic stuff. And everybody's just looking around going... Wait, this guy says more than like two words at a time. What, what what's going on? Wow, he's a really good diplomat. So so definitely don't pigeonhole yourself. Definitely with this game, take the opportunity to explore the things you normally would not do. So in regards to the player base, um, I've never actually connected this deeply with a player base before, like even at like home games and stuff. Um, I felt so welcomed into the fold that I was actually able to drop not only character to have real conversations with people, but also my general uh, public performer facade with this group. Um, and those of you who know me know that I come off as a joker, I tend to be inappropriate, the humor can be kind of crass and what have you, but you know, those who truly know me know that that is just an outer layer of my personality, and that's basically how I interact with the public. Um, this was this was the first time in this trip where I feel, with the exception of like a couple of friends' couches that I crashed on, where the performer facade actually just kind of dropped, and it wasn't a deliberate thing. Like I was just that comfortable with this group that I was able to open up. Fully. Um, you know, it was a very unique experience for me, and I hope that I get more of it next weekend, especially since many of the players from this LARP are going to be attending the next one that I'm going to be going to. And, it, you know, it, 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 it was just such a wonderful and unique experience for me to actually connect with a group like that, because I so rarely get to do it because I, I, I so fear the judgment. And I tend to come off as a know-it-all, and uh, it, you know my my personality does tend to be somewhat off-putting when I drop the public performer, and that should say something about why I keep that public performer facade up. Uh, so in in regards to the new player treatment, um, it was comprehensive training with knowledgeable staff right off the start. Uh, the new player mod was uh, you know delightful uh, as an introduction. Um, you know, the, the, the warm welcomes into the game, you know, help, the, the welcome was so warm that you couldn't help but be immersed and learn more about the world. Um, you know, the general atmosphere of camaraderie that, uh, is so easy to flow with that you don't realize that it's your first game. Um, you know, unless, you know, unless, like, you're completely new to LARPing, uh, you know, being welcomed into the fold like this was one of the warmest experiences that I've had on this trip. Um, additionally, I, I also have to just kind of point out here, uh, the new player mod that they hosted on Saturday for us was delightfully whimsical and made lasting impression on the game world and the characters, and it's kind of rare to see that. Uh, usually newbie mods are very much a throwaway kind of thing, and, you know, it's all well and good to give the new players practice and stuff like that, but to know that what we did actually had an impact on the world, even though it didn't, was truly delightful. I mean, it felt like it was important to the story uh, and the character and development of like a larger group of characters as opposed to just the you know these individual new people who came in for this game we're going to give them something a little special and they get some loot for it and that's it no it, it this actually helped to form connections with older players this helped to establish the world for the new players a little bit better and sink us into it further it, it actually had like a lasting effect on ideas and concepts for the other players to play around with, even if they hadn't gone on the mod. So yeah, de definite kudos on the new player treatment, you know, be above and beyond top notch. Um, you know, I, 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 w I wish that all LARPs could actually have that kind of mentality uh, just because I feel that it would benefit 
uh, you know, the, the genre of LARPing as a whole. Now, in regards to the immersion level, um, at many, many LARPs, uh, especially on this trip, I actively try not to bring my best roleplay game forward because I have 30 years of stage experience. And, you know, that can be really intimidating to many new players who are nervous about playing a different character or have never roleplayed before. Uh, and, I, and I understand, you know, you, 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 bring, you bring in, you expect them to bring it up, but it, you, you can go too far with bringing it and actually, you know, scare people away like that. Um, you know, I, I always maintain character and try to help immerse people in the world via my songs as I can. Uh, but, you know, for the most part, I tend to keep my game at around like a C plus B minus level. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's enough that I can do the interaction, I can do the immersion and everything like that, but it's not so much that it's going to scare people uh, or intimidate people away. Because uh, the last thing that I want to do in any of these games is drive away other new players because I'm just kind of passing through, so that's really not fair to any of these games. You know, if, if there is somebody who is truly bringing like their A game to the roleplay scenario with me, I'll come up to their level. Like, I'm more than happy to do that, but I need their permission, as it were, in order to do that. Otherwise, I do kind of fear that I might, you know, be very off-putting to people if I just go full bore right off the bat. But, um, at this game, even while out of game, people were still in game. Um, the ambient immersion that players provided kept me having to reach deeper and deeper to come up to their level. Um, I, 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 don't think, I don't think that outside of a theater setting I've ever seen uh, character immersion and depth like this good. Um, you know, additionally, there was a lot of musical talent there that, to be quite frank, put me to shame. Um... You know, I fear that all I really had to offer in that department was songs that folks had not yet heard, and even then, there was still a person there who had the ability to, I don't know what it would be called, follow singing? Um, I've heard of sight singing, I've never heard of somebody who can just right off the cuff sing by ear. Um, you know, so... Like, even if they didn't know the lyrics, they were still singing the lyrics accurately. Like, I've never seen a talent like that. Um, so no matter, you know, where I went, as long as they were around, I had a singing partner. And, you know, beautiful voice, perfect harmonies. Like, it, it, it was delightful. Um, to, to, to say that I'm jealous is an understatement. Like, I, I... I, I, I tend to sing by ear, don't get me wrong, but it takes me a good, like, 50 to 75 listens through of a song before I pick it up. And this person is just, you know, as soon as they hear the words, they're following along and singing out and, you know, in perfect pitch and harmony. And, oh, it was delightful and yet so intimidating. And, yeah, like... I, I would love to just, in general, hang out with some of these people, uh, you know, on, a, on just like a regular basis. Like, I definitely see some of these friendships as being, you know, not just kind of like, you know, an on and off contact, you know, maybe a few times every month. Like, this could very much end up being like, you know, contacting like daily or at least a couple times a week. Like, hey, I just found a new song. Hey, have you heard any new songs? Let's share ideas and stuff. Like, I totally see that happening with this group. So, um, all that being said, I, the overall experience that I had this LARP was very unique. It, it, it was something that I never experienced before. Um, because in addition to just an overall amazing game experience and game, okay, I need to toe a line here and talk about a somewhat sensitive issue in the LARPing community, and that is diversity. Uh, many LARPs do have uh, the LGBTQ plus community and, uh, you know, people coming in and what have you. But there is a certain lack of ethnic diversity that I notice in many LARPs. Um, it, not this one. Not this one. Per capita, 
this was the most ethnically diverse LARP I have ever been to. And seeing that made me realize that way too many LARPs are failing in this area. Uh, a world is not complete if it only has a bunch of cis hetero white males uh, whacking at each other in the woods with boffers. Um, anyways, what, I, what I'm really getting at is that LARPing as a general community, we really need to step up our inclusivity more if we want LARPing itself to be better as a whole and to survive longer. Uh, too often I see games that are uh, very uh, white-centric. Like, I hate to phrase it that way, but that's what it is. Um, and, you know, we've gotten a lot better about, you know, not being so male-centric. Like, there's a lot more female LARPers now. There's a lot more, you know, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, genderqueer at, uh, at all, um, you know, LARPers as well. But you don't really see many people of color. You don't see many Lat uh, Latinx. You don't see many Asians in a lot of the American LARPs. I'm not saying that they're not there, but there should be more. And so the, this kind of became, you know, one of the more poignant things that I noticed at this LARP. Um, you know, and I actually sat down and talked to the staff about it, and I had a I had an idea as to how to help mitigate this problem, but I didn't want to just uh, go off on my own. Like, you know, so I actually sat down with the staff, and um, while I learned many things about system coordination, uh, you know, for such a freeform game, and uh, you know, the importance of adding, like, a touch of whimsy in to remind people, hey, it is just a game, we're all here to have fun, let's have a little bit of a laugh amidst all this seriousness. Uh, the most important thing that I learned really came out of this, and it was that the diversity in a game uh, player base has to begin with the staff. Um, you, it's wonderful to have a staff where... There's a woman on staff. Yes, that's wonderful. You know that that you know when you have a uh, uh, a transgender uh, person on staff. Yes, this is wonderful. You need to have uh, everybody that you want to be coming to your game represented on your staff. Uh, you can't have a staff that is nothing but like a bunch of heterosexual white middle-aged men and expect that to actually appeal to a wide array of, of, diver, of diverse ethnicities and mindsets and cultures and lifestyles. Uh, because if they don't feel that they're represented and that their issues are not being considered, they're not going to come to your game. And one of the most important things for LARP is to be inclusive of all. It's a game, we're all there to have fun, and fun is meant for everyone to enjoy. And on that note, that's actually what I learned from the players at this game, is not, it's just that reminder not to take myself so seriously. Um, somewhere along this journey, I had kind of forgotten that, and the reminder that they gave me for that really came at just the right time. Um, so those are really my thoughts and what I learned from Gardens of Destiny. Uh, I do hope to see everybody next weekend at After the End up in Tennessee. And until that point, well, actually, there is one last little thing. Um, I owe a serious, serious um, amount of apologies to the GM and the staff at Garden of Destinies for the endless moose references they are going to be getting for a while. I did the song on request for a room full of people, and it has kind of snowballed into an epic running gag that everybody seems to be uh, either enjoying or loathing to a degree that might come to blows. And so I do truly want to apologize for that. But on that same thread, I'd like to offer you one more verse. 
the men of the garden are a god-awful lot i know of a couple i'd even call sot they talk of their women and suck down their juice but if truth be told they'd all bed with a moose and it's moose moose i like a moose i've never had anything quite like a moose i've had many lovers my life has been loose but i've never had anything quite like a moose well i do hope that you enjoyed that and i will see you all next weekend at after the end have fun